Then at this relevant threshing note, I didn't expect to make this tonight. I've been here for 15 minutes, so I'm just coming on a tear end of what you were talking about. I appreciate all the news. I was seriously ill not so long ago, about 18 months. I was getting, actually, a doctor rang me. I was on a train. I was told to get off on the next station coming up from Bournemouth to London and get myself into the nearest emergency hospital if I wanted any chance of seeing the night through. But I had a major problem. I was giving a talk to, to, uh, to a bunch of professionals for research autism. And it just happened, so happened where I was giving this talk was next door to a major London teaching hospital. So I decided that it was more important to give a talk. Nothing was going to stop me from giving this talk. And I thought if I did collapse, I didn't have very far to go. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing that, it's funny. You, you, you made me just think of just picking up on that. My um, phone number, mum was very ill very recently, and um, funny if there was a routine, um, quite a routine thing that was missed. It's a routine thing that if you do this, it can cause serious stuff, and you, you can die. And she had that time when she was preparing for her wedding, and <laughs> she contacted me and she told me that she was in hospital. She didn't say much about it, so I was thinking, okay, am I going to go today, am I going to go tomorrow? So that's another thing about whilst there's still time. I'm assuming that it's miles. Oh, well, let's just get this text through. Fortunately for me, I decided to go that day and to see her. First thing I noticed, and what you said, Dr. Sackley, she was so lucid, she was really unwell, well, that she was clearer than I get them to remind me of my mother and my little sister. She was very unwell. And she was so clear, she was so loose. All sorts of things happened, but she was so clear. And she became clearer than I'd ever heard her before, and she was very clear about her head. She was, became very clear about the things that needed to be done to take care of her. She was become aware of some of the things that had been missed in being so unwell. So I'm so glad you made that point, because sometimes it is a case of listening to your body and not everybody. And this is where then the mind and the, the heart can work together as one. That there's the intelligence of knowing I need to be near the hospital, I'm not going to be completely foolish and just give a talk to someone. Else. But then the, the, the intuition of here I can speak, and so they blend together. That, that meant that you could give the talk and that you could be prepared for goodness, you know, that something wouldn't happen. That, 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 there's that. And it's extraordinary the magic that comes from when we trust, because how many of us have had those experiences where we just listen to our own voice? And so I mean, that's the thing. If I had listened to my own voice or the voice, whether I, whether I perceive it's an external or internal voice, doesn't matter. So don't worry about it. I'm listening. Is it here? Is it coming from here? If it's a call, then it's a call. Don't worry where the call's coming from. <laughs> the call. If there's a fire alarm going off, oh, is it? The, did, it did the porter set it off? Did I set it off? Did my daughter set it off? It doesn't matter. It's a call. Yeah, we've got a second point for us to take that take somebody else. So do you, do you want to just want to add, add a little bit to it, which I think is very relevant. The interesting part of birth, I knew I was seriously ill. I was in extreme pain. I mean, I, I was really, I was almost like a lifeless corpse. But it was important for me to give this talk. So there wasn't a dilemma I was going to do it, come what may. I didn't think about dying. Dying was an option. So I don't know if that's relevant. It's interesting also, isn't it, with, I mean, one thing that just strikes me about that, you know, just very briefly, that I, I wonder, it's funny thinking about before, that sometimes, you know, people, when you are doing your work, when you are doing your work, you can't not but do your work. Yes, it's I've so been for 45 minutes right. in, in, in an extreme condition. It's, it's really extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, it can be, yeah. I think it's important to balance both, but that's a guess, because I mean, I think people who are suffering from this situations have a physiological response, right? Because we have fight or flight. So what happens is there's a cortisol release in our adrenals and we are able to do remarkable things, which may have been the case for you. Mm -hmm. People get into car accidents, right? And they, they are able to lift the car up and pull the person out. Why? Because actually that fight or flight response is what's operating. And it's the, the, the cortisol is a stress hormone. Now, at the same time, too much of that uh, uh, hormone, right, the 
stress react reaction is going to be very damaging. And that's the case in trauma. So when you see, for example, people uh, with uh, persistent trauma, one of the things that will happen is their adrenals are exhausted, exhausted and they're unable to, to garner those resources because they've been in a stress response. I know, for example, um, when my son died, the adrenal reaction I got kept me up for weeks. Unable to eat or sleep, but I was able to plan and do and search, and we, we had search parties through the mountains looking for these kids. It was extraordinary, but the price I paid for that afterwards was extreme exhaustion. And all the people that I've worked with who have experienced trauma have the same reaction. So, I guess the point is to know yourself well enough to allow the stress response to happen when necessary, but to also take really good care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you push yourself too far, it'll be very difficult to come. So again, this is sort of like know thyself. Listen to your own body and your own wisdom, but most of all, be able to take care of yourself. And the thing that just strikes me about that when you mention that, I'm so glad you mentioned those, those couple of dimensions, that sometimes when you do this as a call, one thing that happens is that often before we are kind of fixed, we are stuck, we're fixed, things are limited, which is why we're wanting things to shift, we're wanting to move, we're wanting to change job, we're wanting a different relationship or whatever it might well be that's going on. And then sometimes as we do this as a call, as we go on this journey, what interestingly happens is in different ways, these new pathways, the new, I don't know much of the science, I'm not interested in really in the, in, in the science, but it's fascinating when you hear the science, isn't it? That new stuff, magic kind of happens. So all of a sudden, the clarity to be able to do this, or the, the strength of mind to be able to get through something, all sorts of stuff, and that happens as we move beyond our limited intelligence, which it is, because the mind is just the simulation of all this stuff that we learned and so on, and if we're going through life, just carrying this bag full of stuff and trying to sort everything based on this bag full of tools. It's absurd sometimes, isn't it? You know, a quick aside, quick aside, what we call mental health in this country, and often time, is absurd. And therefore, what we, how we label people who will have different similar situations, it's absolutely absurd, because the way that we go about our lives, listening to this, to one story, and not listening to the heart, it's absolutely that absurd. It is not a good level often of, of actual deep mental of, of deep mental health. Do you see what I'm, I'm, I'm pointing to? Because we just believe one version of one story that it is. I was just telling this very, very briefly. I was with somebody yesterday the other day who watched a talk that we've given together. Lady she was later with Asperger's and so was her daughter. And part of the uh, um, story that she was given was she wasn't empathetic, she wasn't able to empathize. I sat with her for two sessions. The second session, I was touched by her deep compassion and empathy. So sometimes then, through the call, the story falls away, and then we realize that we've got these greater gifts, skills, talents, abilities. Yeah.